morning, everybody, and welcome to the Glitchcraft server. Yes, I'm actually on here, and it wasn't spawned by the necessity of watching somebody else's video. In the last episode, I was pranked um, in my previous house that I really never would have seen if I hadn't watched that video. Hmm, whatever. But in the episode before that, a long, long time ago... I was working on Tinker's Construct, and I had made an iron pickaxe head, which I have since replaced with a bronze pickaxe and have upgraded to redstone level. Now, redstone level has its advantages because you can get diamond, and I think I got diamond. No. 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 Hmm. It was so long ago, and I don't remember. I really shouldn't, like, leave this much space. Yes, I got diamond. Okay, so I got plenty of diamond. So that means I can move on to my next step. Because in all honesty, I have no freaking clue where I'm supposed to go with this pickaxe. You know, after redstone level, I have no idea where I'm supposed to go in Tinker's Construct. Not a clue. And that whole, in the last episode where I was talking about, you know, uh, uh, what was it, uh... Copper upgrading to tin, upgrading to iron. Wrong. Uh, copper goes to iron, goes to tin. I think. Because tin is actually bronze, not tin. So it's all very confusing. But in today's episode, I'm not going to worry about that, at least not right off the bat. I want to automate this because I've got lots of ore, specifically lots of copper ore, and a bunch of other ore, gold, silver... Not a lot of gold, actually. Hmm. Lead, titanium, which I don't think actually ends up in here. Not sure. I don't remember. I'll find out. Uh, zinc, which doesn't end up in there because it's blue power. Osmium also doesn't end up in there. Ferris ore, which... Uh, well, it says thermal foundation. I don't remember. Um, I think I separated these three because they don't go in there. Uh, aluminum does because it's Tinker's Construct. And then copper. So, plenty of that stuff, and I also have an ass load of tin. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to be sitting there just going, Bleh. and then waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and it's annoying as shit. So, it's time to automate some of this stuff. What do I have all in here? I have a few things in here. Uh, Man of Steel and Dark Steel I got from the insane village over there. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Um, yeah, so let's actually start automating some of this stuff. Now, the easiest way to automate part of it anyways is in the smeltery controller itself. And this is why I wanted the smeltery controller here instead of in the center here. Because I want to add this guy, a hopper. So if I add a hopper here and I put stuff in the hopper, it will automatically go into here. Which I don't want to do right now because I want to clean out the smeltery first. And now the easiest way to do that is to automate this process here. So the output, so instead of right clicking here, letting it, waiting until it fills, right clicking on the basin, and then putting it in the chest, Let's see if we can automate that process. Now, there's a couple ways we can automate that process. The easiest way to automate it is a regular hopper. So, like, uh, just the regular Minecraft hopper. I find it, anyways, the easiest way to do it. The other way you could do it with uh, ducts. No, duct. That's the fluid ducts. Fluid ducts. Item ducts. Yeah, I want the item ducts. Let's look at the item ducts. Item ducts. All right, so regular item duct takes two tin and fused quartz or hardened glass. That requires an alloy smelter, which I don't have. Uh, what about the hardened? That involves an induction smelter, which I don't have. Hardened glass involves an induction smelter, which I don't have. So I'm not making item ducts. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Opaque item ducts take tin, lead, and tin. Okay, so that we can do because we have lead, right? Yes, we have a little bit of lead. All right, so next step, after we get the item duct, we need a uh, servo. 
And the cheapest servo is this guy, which takes iron, iron nuggets, iron ingots, iron nuggets, redstone, and just regular glass. Do we have all of that stuff? I know I have iron. Wait, do I have iron? Let's make sure I actually have iron. Uh, yes, plenty of iron. I know I have redstone. Boop. Yeah, plenty of redstone. But glass. I have glass panes. Do I just have regular glass lying around anywhere? Oop, my hand twitched. That's coal, so I can make glass, I guess. Boing, boing, boing. I have sand, don't I? Oh, I have glass. Okay, so let's do this the easy way. Well, I would say the easiest way, but... Uh, if I do the hopper way, I'd have to dig out the cobblestone underneath the casting table and the casting basin and bring it over and put a chest under here, and it just wouldn't work right. However, if I do it this way, uh, iron, glass, iron ingots, ooh, and I still need redstone. Let's make, nope, I just need one redstone because it takes two, or it makes two servos. No, not there. Iron ingot, which makes the nuggets, and then take two nuggets, redstone, ingots, glass, and I get two servos. All right, that makes life easy. Then we need to make uh, lead, Oop. which I could do that real quick. I'll just make, I'll just make one. Bloop. Oop, come on, around. There we go. All right, so as you saw, it went from the hopper directly into the smeltery controller, which is really useful in my opinion. Um, all right, what else do I need? I need, yeah, two tin, which I think I already have. I don't think I have to make any. Tin, 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 tin. I have blocks of tin. I don't have bars of tin. But let's take a look. How much tin do I have right now? I have 239. So 239, using the math that I did in a couple episodes ago, a couple videos ago, the Minecraft math one, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is not divisible by 9, so that this whole 239 is not divisible by 9, but 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, which means that I am 5 nuggets over. If I subtract 5 nuggets from 239, it will make a number that's divisible by 9. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That actually comes in handy later. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so now we have our five ingots and we do our quick little Minecraft math. Uh, two plus three is five, plus four is nine. So 234 is divisible by nine which again is very useful later on. I will show you in a second. So molten lead, we got two of those ingots. One. Come on. Boop. Two. Boop. All right, and let's go make our item, or yeah, our item duct. That's a furnace. Uh, there it is, okay. And that was two tin and a lead which makes six opaque item ducts, and I don't need the clear ones. Don't really care about the clear ones. And putting that right there is exactly what I want. And then we put our, no, give me my meat back. Thank you. Put a servo in there. I'm gonna have to make one of them wrenches here soon. Uh, boop. So, always on. Uh, blacklist, nothing. All right. So now we have a pipe so that when we fill this guy, we, and we twiddle our thumbs, and we twiddle our thumbs, and we wait. When it hardens, it instantly gets sucked out and goes into my chest. All right, so that helps a little bit, but it's still not automating the process. So how do we fully automate the process? Well, to do that, we need a timer. Now there are two different types of timers. There, or there's three different types of timers. There's the Project Red timer, which has these interesting little circuits that I love to work with. 
we have the blue power timer, which has other little tiny circuits. And then we have the RF tools timer, which is more of a Minecraft style crafting thing. Now, I would just go with a regular redstone timer, the Project Red timer, but it seems to be overpowered slightly by the blue power timer. Back back in the old like old building, I wasn't able to use I wasn't able to make these anymore. I was at the beginning, but then I wasn't. I was forced to make the blue power timers, and the blue power timer seemed glitchy. They would run for a little while and then they would just freeze. So I couldn't just leave them running, which kind of sucked. Uh, so I switched over to the RF Tools timer, which is really, really nice. There, It's really useful, very, very precise, and it hasn't locked up on me. Costs a little bit more. I need redstone, torches, machine base, which doesn't cost much, some smooth stone and gold nuggets. I can do that. Uh, and a clock, which is just gold ingots and some redstone. So let's get me some gold. Yeah, I need gold, lots of gold, redstone, some sticks, and smooth stone. Do I keep smooth stone anywhere? I know I have cobblestone, so I can make smooth stone easily enough. Do I have any smooth stone already made? I don't think so. No, that's not something I really keep handy. Uh, sticks, sticks, sticks. In this chest. No, not that chest. Where do I keep my wood? Again, I need to I need to make a promise to not skip extended periods in this game. Because I lose track. Wait, no, I don't want to be in there. Uh, I have wood here. Yes, okay. Three sticks, which will give me three redstone torches, which will be useful. Which will be exactly what I need. Alright, so three sticks. Three redstone, three redstone torches. Then I need some smooth stone, so I need some coal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oop, one too many. So I'll let that cook for a minute. Uh, what else do I need? I need a clock, which is redstone and three gold ingots, which gives me my clock. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, the machine base. All right, well, then I guess I have to wait till this thing gives me three, and that's one. Let's go sleep. Let's, let's make it day while we're waiting for that. Mm, there we go. Now we're awake again. Hey, no coughing fit. Hey, that's always good when you have a cold. You wake up and you don't have a coughing fit. Though I have to admit, I expect that tomorrow morning. I expect that when I wake up, I'm going to have a severe coughing fit. I'm feeling significantly better better right now for my cold but uh that's usually how it works for me it's like i'll feel significantly better and then the next day i'll just wake up hacking a lung out and it takes me like an hour but after that hour i'll feel better again i i, I don't understand my body acts weird when it comes to cold okay so now we have a timer let's see if this works i have never actually tried doing this sideways before Boop. Okay. Um, I get the funny feeling that this isn't going to work. Alright, so that's... Boop. Alright, this is how many? I think it's actually based on ticks. Not on... Wow. Oh. Okay, so timer. Uh, timer is a simple gate that will repeatedly send redstone pulse. You can input any value for the delay so it can be used for very long timeouts. What is special about the timer is that it restart when itself receives a redstone pulse at its input. So given timely input pulses, this block will never output a pulse itself. By using this feature, this block can be used as a way to detect a certain activity is overdue. Uh, and that's just a counter. Uh, so it doesn't say. I think it's based on ticks. Oh, yeah, 20 ticks is one second. So this ain't going to work in general because uh, of how it's not placed properly. Like I said, I hadn't tried this before. Boop. All right, so there we go. So now it's working. We don't want this running at one pulse every tick because that would be silly. 
Uh, we actually want this running every 15 seconds. I've timed this many, many times. It needs to be 15 seconds. So we're talking about 15 times 20, which is 30, 300. All right. All right, so now this thing will pulse. I don't know if that's graphical glitchy or if it's... Yeah, it should pulse every 15 seconds, which should be exactly what you just saw there. Then when this dries and gets sucked out, that should be the exact amount of time it needs to start up again. Yes, okay, so that seems to work. Uh, I think it's working. That is one of the advantage about the Project Red timers is that you can actually see it doing its thing um, whereas I thought this was supposed to go dark when it's not being used. I don't like how it's pulsing like that. Hang on a second. Okay, it's still flashing. And if I do it manually, it still flashes on a regular basis. Okay, so that's just a graphical glitch. No, shift click. Okay, you're still set to 300. Oops. Turn you back on. Okay, that did exactly what I thought it would do because of the way I placed it and the way I activated that. I figured a pulse would happen while it was still cooling and that that would happen. All right, so now this is basically an automated system. I can back off from it and not touch it and it will empty itself out. This is why it was very important to have a number in here divisible by nine because now I can just forget it and walk away. And if it wasn't divisible by nine, you'd get like four or five ingots in here and then you'd never be able to use the system again until you pop this, lose those four or five ingots and put it back because I haven't figured out how to take those ingots that accidentally get put in here and put it back into the system so I guess I could guess at how many ingots were actually in there, pull them out of here, put them back in the system to be melted, and then put back in here. Pain in the ass. Don't like doing it. So I don't. Hmm. I'm still thinking. I should. I really want this to be sideways. RF tools, RF tools, right? That's, yeah, RF tools. So at RF tools, do we have a wrench of some sort? We have a smart wrench. Uh, use as a normal wrench shape, right click to pick up machines, right click to rotate machines. All right, how much of a pain in the ass would you be? Lapis and iron. All right, do I have lapis? I don't remember if I have lapis. I do have lapis, good. Let's see if this does what I want it to do. Because I want it, I want this thing, I want the timer to be sideways on the wall here, pointed down. Let's see if that's even possible. Iron. Oh, it's in my inventory. Iron. Lapis. Smart wrench. Boop, 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 boop. No. All right, that just lets me pick it up. So I can't flip this over. I can only spin it. Well, that sucks. Hmm. All right. I may have to make a... I'm, I might try making a Project Red timer again. Because I don't want to use the blue, pro, or the blue power timers. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to do that, uh, which means I need to take my smooth stone and run it through the furnace again to make those flat ones. Do I have a second furnace lying around about anywhere? I do, don't I? It's in here because it was making mutton. Yeah, okay, so I have coal, so let's... I think this makes three per, right? Okay, that's actually kind of annoying, and I don't know why. There we go. That's better. Uh, two per. All right, so this makes circuit plate, and it's still Project Red. All right, so sweet, sweet, sweet. 
So uh, I need a timer. And then I take my timer and I make like an antidote. Oh, I kind of need three, don't I? Boop, boop. All right, let's try that again. Timer, anode, boop. All right, so I can make that. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Still need more. Uh, conductive plate, which I'll need three of. Boop, and that gives me three. Then I need a stick because I need a, I need two redstone torches, if I remember correctly. Yeah, for a cathode and for a pointer. Yeah, I need a regular smooth stone, which I have, and I need a stick, which I don't. Let's make those real sticks. It's so one of the problems with the mod pack is that it has all of the different like, uh, uh, crap. All of the different woods have all of their different outputs. So I can make, uh, all the different types of chests, like, uh, acacia wood has acacia chests, and so on and so forth. Boop, boop. And I like it because it gives me options, but it is mildly annoying at times. All right, and then, a uh, pointer... All right, so pointer, cathode, I need more of those things. I'm wasting charcoal and I just realized that. Um, so cathode, pointer, these guys, those two, and these two, and that gives me, yes, Project Red, awesome. All right, so let's get rid of you. You're not helping any, put you there. Set you to 15 seconds. Boop. All right, and then I need to rotate you. Can I by chance do it just this way? No. Okay, so can't use that smart wrench for anything. So I need a screwdriver, which would be under Project Red. At Project... Uh, you. That's the electric screwdriver. I don't care about you. Screwdriver. Three iron and two lapis. Or two blue anything. Well, I have iron. And I should have two blue. Yes. Iron, iron, iron. Blue, wait, blue, blue. Wee! There we go. Boop, boop. All right, so now it's flipped over. And boop. All right, and if, if now we should be able to actually see this thing working like I want it to work. And basically what it is is the second that dries, the timer will hit the bottom. Oh, oh, it's because of the servo, I guess. Hmm, well, that sucks. 16. I guess I could put the hopper underneath there and put the item duct, you know, underneath a chest. That would work. Hmm. Let's make, I do not have cobblestone on me. So cobblestone plus a stick equals a lever. And this is one of this is the reason why I wanted it sideways, so I can do this. There, now it's off. <laughs> so I can disable the uh, timer, which is nice. So now I can fiddle with things. Bloop, bloop. Boop. Boop. Let's dig down one more. May as well go the whole way across. Boop, boop. Hmm, now that I think about it, let's go one more, and I'll show you why here in a second. Do I have enough iron for three? I have 11 iron, and I need five per... Shit, I don't have enough iron. Crap. Hmm. Improvising time. All right, so I need two chests.
real chests. Make two hoppers. Lose almost all of my iron. Oop. Where's my dirt box? All right. I have a plan. I don't know if this will work, but I have a plan. All right, so put that there. Hopper goes there. All right. Pop that. Now I can't get out. <laughs> A little silly of me, wasn't it? All right, so then... Uh, crap. Should be able to do this. All right, so then put a hopper there. Pop you, pop you. Item duct, item duct. All right. Now, I really don't think... Yeah, I didn't think so. The hopper's not going to push things into the item ducts, so I still have to use the servo. Boop. There we go. All right, always on. All right, so now that'll suck out. And then, and I can't get there anymore either. If I take another item duct, put it there, with another servo there, set to always on. All right. Following? Because I don't think I am. No. No. Boop. Boop. Oh, I missed one. Boop. And a boop. Boop, boop. 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 All right. Okay, so here's the idea. You put thing something in the casting table. It gets sucked up by the hopper. It goes through the servo into the item duct into the other hopper. Then it goes through that servo and item duct into the chest. That way, it, when I'm using the casting table, it'll just instantly go and do its thing. And then when I'm using the casting basin... I know, I've just screwed up the timing on that entirely. I can fix that here in a second. Not really, but whatever. How many do we have in here? 27. It cools. It gets sucked into the hopper instantly. And then it ends up in the chest. So now I should be able to let this do its thing. And as long as I don't make more than five stacks, because hoppers hold five stacks, right? Yeah, five stacks. So as long as I don't make more than five stacks simultaneously, which I think is impossible in my current setup, uh, I will never overload that hopper, and thus I will never have a backup like that. So you need to be set back to 15 seconds. And now the timing should be dead on. So now when this thing dries, this thing should be just about ready and then when it pulls through, it should click. So. Okay, that didn't actually work. And that's because I'm out. Okay, good, 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 good. That did click at the right time, though. So this is good. So now we can turn you off. And then we can use our automated system up here to make an ass load of copper. So copper, 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 and I'm out of copper. Holy shite. Hmm. I don't, I can't put any more copper. I, I, I would put a chest up here, but I can't right now. I guess I can. Hang on. I have cobblestone. Not you. There. Okay. So I don't think I have enough cobblestone. I need one more cobblestone. I have plans. I have ideas. I don't know if they will work, but I have ideas. Let's find out. I feel so slow without my jetpack. I was flying around with my jetpack yesterday. Finally cleaned up the mess that Zog left me at the old base with all the glass. Honestly, I mean, I don't want to insult the guy. The, the, the prank was creative. But 
just due to the simple fact that he gave me that digital miner kind of negated the entire purpose of the prank. I mean, it's supposed to be an annoying prank, but you gave me the tools to clean it up by myself. You know, it, it probably would have been more fun if you didn't tell me that that was there. Or if you didn't tell me that that would work. Hmm. All right, so now I can open that chest and it doesn't look like I'm missing anything. If I had a solid block, just a solid cobblestone block, I wouldn't be able to open the chest. Now I can open the chest and do that. So now I can put even more stuff in there. Of course, in the whole time that it took me to do that. Yeah, so plenty, plenty. So 54 is currently divisible by nine. So I guess we gotta wait for that. Um, all right, so last thing, can we do that? It's not a, it's a fluiduct. All right, so I need a hardened fluiduct, right? Temperate fluiduct, right? Uh, will break if contents are extremely hot or cold, so no, hardened fluid duct. Contents may be any temperature, so I would need this guy. Alright, so this is probably the easiest one, which would be Invar and Lead. And Invar, I need Invar Blend. Can you make anything easier? Uh, boop. I'm looking to see if I can make Invar in any way right now. Okay, so nickel and iron. So 144 millibuckets of nickel and 288 millibuckets of iron makes 432 millibuckets of Invar. I think that's, I don't know. I really don't know. I have one iron ingot. I don't think I have any nickel here. Iron, gold, bronze, lead, copper, copper, tin, brass, and copper. No. But I believe this guy makes nickel. If I throw ferrous ore into the smeltery, it should make nickel. So if I get some more iron, which I don't have enough of, because I only have one iron ingot, and it looked like... Yeah, I probably can't make, uh, boop. Yeah, because that's Invar and hardened glass, which we already determined I can't make. Um, so yeah, if I make, boop. Yeah, looks like two to one. So if I get one uh, ingot of nickel and two ingots of iron, I should be able to make three ingots of yeah, of Invar. All right, so that means I need more iron, and of course I just lost all my iron. I have one iron. Ooh, but I have 37 blocks of iron, so I'm good there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yay. All right, so, but we have copper cooking right now, don't we? Lots of it. All right, well, I, this is the last thing I want to do in this episode. So I'm just going to skip over the whole copper thing. Um, do I still have a bucket anywhere around here? Yes, I do. Because I have to do this manually. Basically what I did is I took a bunch of iron that I had previously, went over to that lava pit that I found, filled up a lava drum as far as I could. I ran out of lava. And now I can just use the lava drum to fill up the uh, seared tank. But with a hardened fluid duct which I'm gonna use the opaque one because I don't have the hardened glass for the clear one. Uh, with the hardened fluid duct and another servo, I can basically put the uh, barrel, hmm, I should probably put it here and use two hardened fluid ducts and connect it there. Oh, you're just a regular slime, I don't care about you. I thought you were a king slime. If you were a king slime, I was gonna kick your ass with a king slime Banana. Bonana. B O N question mark question mark N A. I don't know. The banana sword. I didn't get any slime balls. That's unusual. Hmm, whatever. Yeah, that is a small risk of living underneath a slime uh, island, but I don't really care. Slime balls are useful, so I go with them. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I will wait until the copper finishes cooking, which isn't going to take long. Then I'll dump it all through this system, and I will cut back to when I have all of the copper in the world. See you in a minute. And I'm back, and now we have 55 blocks of copper and 13 copper ingots. Which will be useful, I think, later. I don't know, what do you use copper for? Eh, I guess I'll find out. Alright, so let's do our last thing and see if we can get this working. Now, note that I currently have 2,375 millibuckets of lava. This will be useful in the future. And of course, as I do this, it should only go down. So this is ferrous ore. It should make two. Uh, two nickel. And two iron ingots will obviously make two iron. And if I'm correct, that two iron and two ferrous will make uh, three uh, invar. Yeah, that's it. Three invar and leave me with one nickel. Which I want to, that's exactly what I want to do. And it will work for what, it will work for my purposes, to say the least. What else do I need? While I'm waiting for that hardened fluid ducts, I need invar and lead. Do I have an extra lead? I think I do. Yes, I do. I have an extra lead. Okay, cool. Don't have to make more lead. All right, so this should almost be done. Ferris ore turns into, I hope I'm right. Molten nickel. Cool. Sweet, 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 sweet. Yeah, I think if you make take one molten nickel, put it in here, it actually turns into like a, a... Wait, does it turn into a nickel? I think it actually does turn into a nickel ingot. Waiting for it to process through the system. There it is. Nope, it turns into a ferrous ingot. Uh... Huh. The reason I was saving the ferrous ore is because you, if you throw it through a grinder, it turns into, it gets you like shiny stuff. Okay, so now we have three ingots of molten invar. Ooh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, fuel, 2,030 millibuckets. Uh, so one, two, three, my chickens sound like they're actually popping out eggs. Are you actually popping out eggs? Yes, you are. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I want, I, I, they haven't like pooped out eggs like the entire time I've been on the server today. I don't know why. All right, so three invar ingots, I only need two. Uh, I need a workbench. So lead to invar. And we get a hardened fluid duct. Boop. And then if I take my barrel, boop, my lava drum, which can just be picked up. I have no idea why. I think I can sit it here and then use the uh, hardened fluid ducts up into the sear tank and it would work, but I need a servo. However, if I put the lava drum here and then the fluid duct here, it just works. I think. Apparently not. Judging from what Weala is telling me up above, no, it does not just work. All right, so I need to make a new servo, which means I need two iron nuggets, two iron ingots, boing, 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 some glass, and a redstone. If I remember correctly, iron nuggets, iron ingots, glass, redstone, servos. Woohoo! All right, so servo in there. Activate you. And now we have fuel going. All right, so now we have 4,000 millibuckets of fuel. So that actually worked. So now what I have is an automated smeltery, or at least industrial revolution levels of automated smeltery. Okay, so I still have to manually put things into the system. I have to keep track of how many things are in the system. I have to manually activate the timer to output the system. 
but everything else is automated. So, yeah, it's industrial revolution levels of automation, which is cool. I like that. It's kind of steampunky. Kind of. Almost. It's, well, I keep saying this because it's absolutely true. It's industrial revolution levels of automation, and I like that. All right, so, uh, yeah, lava goes in, so now all I have to do when I need to refill is take the lava drum and one bucket over to a nearby lava source, wherever the hell that may end up being, uh, then put it back here, and it will autofill the seared tank, which powers the smeltery. I take all of the stuff that I mine, like, say, ooh, this aluminum ore, and I throw it in my input chest. It goes through the hopper into the smeltery controller, and then from there it turns into goo. And then once it's done turning into goo, I activate the lever, which activates the timer, which automatically outputs to the casting basin. Now, while it's doing that, I keep an eye on how many ingots will end up in the smeltery. That way I can remove enough ingots so that the number in there is divisible by nine so that this automated system can remain automated and I don't have to worry about turning it off because I don't have enough ingots and they get stuck in the casting basin and blah, 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 blah. All right, so that was fun, and I like it. Uh, it actually turned out looking cooler than I thought it would, especially now that I figured out it is Industrial Revolution. That's sweet. All right, so I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always, keep playing the game and have fun. Boop.